Matt and Grant, one last time from Atlanta here in the Phillips Arena as K-State falls to Loyola in the Elite Eight, 78-62. to Take me through the game, Matt. Uh, we t I talked about this in my running diary before the game started that it was interesting that K-State uh, got big leads against the teams that they were underdogs against, kind of, you know, or at least lower seeds when Creighton and Kentucky. And the opposite happened against UMBC. They fell behind big early, but they could come back pretty quickly. And by the 13 minute mark of that game, they were ahead and in control uh, somewhat. Um, tonight, they fell behind to a low, lower seeded team again and never, never really got back in it all the way. Uh, cut it to five late in the first half, but UMBC continued to make shots throughout. K State played with an awful lot of effort, I thought. Um, I thought their intentions were in the right place. But we said going in that Loyola was a very good basketball team. Mm -hmm. um, they're 32-5, and five. now they won 14 straight. We kept saying that K-State yeah. would have to play a great game to win this. They didn't play a great game tonight, and therefore Loyola is going to the Final Four. Anything else to add there that the Ramblers did to beat K-State in this one? Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen a team have as much success getting into the lane against K-State as the Ramblers did tonight. K-State could not keep them in front of them, uh, forced a lot of help. Either the help came and Loyola dished it out for open threes and connected on those, or the help didn't come and they had easy layups. They they put K-State in a lot of scramble situations on defense, which Kentucky couldn't do, Creighton couldn't do, UMBC couldn't do, but Loyola could tonight and did it consistently. That's how they won the game. And then just timely shooting. You know, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I want to say they were 55% from the field, probably 50% from three, over 80% from the free throw line uh, you shoot the ball that well in a pressure situation against a good defense you yeah. deserve to win and it was a tough game for the cats but any positives you can take away from this one uh, i think of course the the big picture one, and I laugh as I say it, but K-State made the Elite Eight. You know, K-State uh, picked, finished eighth in the Big 12, finished fourth in the Big 12, a nine seed in this tournament, makes the Elite Eight, beats Kentucky here in Atlanta, and one of the biggest wins, you know, probably in K-State basketball history. Um, that's the obvious positive, is this program had an amazing year and should feel great about that. From the game today, uh, this is corny, but I think it's worth saying K-State didn't give up. Yeah. They were behind, you know, 23 in the second half, cut it down to 12 at one point. It had a three from Cam Stokes that was as close to physically going through the hoop as it can possibly be without falling that would have cut it to nine. Yeah. Um, they, they still would have probably dropped this game, but I thought that was impressive. Uh, he stood out to me. Cam had 11 in the second half. Don't turn over two points, two boards, and attacked them ferociously towards the end of the game. A random one is Ahmad Wainwright. Uh, played with a, a, amazing effort in the second half when K-State was, you know, down big, down by as many as 20 points. Um, I thought everyone played really hard. Xavier Sneed played well again. Bayer Brown had his moments. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting guys again who played well in this game. Cardi Diara hit some big shots and gave K-State some offense early in the second half, but um, a lot of good efforts, a lot of great performances, or good performances that at least were great efforts just not enough you yeah. know to get over a very good basketball team talk about k-state's entire season and how impressed are you with the coaching staff and this team uh, couldn't couldn't be more impressed. I think I said this already, but I'll say it again. Uh, I think they had four players on this team who'd played a game of you know of major college basketball on this roster. Everyone wants to act like oh you're six, they should be in a certain certain place. Yeah. They had four guys who had played. Yeah. It wasn't. It was one of the youngest teams in college basketball. Yes, three of those guys, you know, four if you go to Xavier Sneed, had played a lot of minutes, but they had to develop a lot of depth. I remember you and me sitting in the car after a game in Lawrence, yeah. joking about how man this roster only has four four Big Twelve players yeah. and. So the impressive thing is now you look at it and they have a bunch of them. You think Cardi Ajada is, you think Mike McGurl is, you think Ahmad Wainwright is, uh, McCall Mawain is, you know, and he, he was rough tonight, but he's had a lot of good moments this season. So I think the development of the team over the season, you know, they lost the Tulsa in a game that everyone killed them for earlier in the season, had some struggles, battled some injuries. By the end of the year, they were safely in the tournament, fourth in the Big 12, and then people always talk about well, what can you do in the tournament. Well, they won three games, went to the Elite Eight. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I could sit down and think about it, but it's going to be hard to find the last time a K-State basketball coach had a better season um, than Bruce Weber and, of course, his staff with Chris Lowry, Brad Korn, Chester Frazier. Um, just tremendous effort from that group. And how excited should they be about the next year and the future of this team? Uh, you know, I keep with all this hyperbole, but I, I don't know of a, a season they should have gotten to. The more excitement, there was that Jake Poland year where they were number three in the country preseason yeah. after going to the Elite Eight. Uh, I don't know if this team's going to be better than that team or not, but they, you know, they bring everyone back. There'll be some chatter, of course, over the next few days about mm -hmm. names that could be declared. And I think you'll hear some names declared. We talk about this yeah. all season long. I, you know, it's, it's hard to judge what they said off at, after, after the game tonight, but I, I think everyone will return. Um, it's a team that's uh, it will be an easy pick for the preseason top 15. We'll probably pick finish second in the Big 12. It'll be the most experienced, you know, loaded K-State team that's been around in a long, long time. So um, I think uh, Brambles will be a different atmosphere next year than it was this year, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun to be part of. And uh, I really look forward to it personally. Well, you heard it from the smart guy here, Matt Hall. And uh, we're happy that we were able to give you this coverage from Atlanta. And, uh, yeah, any last words? You know, I think you probably know what I'm going to say, but I think Flanders has done enough work here that he deserves to close this out with those three little words. Tell your friends. <laughs>